Hey, hey, Turnbuckle King here. Going to explain what caused Edge to leave WWE. All right, so we're going to do a little reaction here. Everyone know about the big news of Edge, a.k.a. his real name, Adam Copeland, what caused him to leave WWE. He has made the move from WWE to AEW, debuting in AEW Wrestle Dream Sunday night at the main event during the Christian Darby Allen TNT 2 out of 3 Falls match. So, I'm going to react to this, but I'm not alone. I got Mr. Goodbray with me, and I appreciate him coming out. So, I'm going to bring him along to the party. Salute, salute. What's up, Toxic Ring Scandals? And those of you coming from the Red, red Carpet, Carpet Ring, how y'all doing? Yep, Red Carpet here, Toxic Ring. You know. But this is a red carpet rain turnbuckle king uh reaction here. But yes, you can check me out on Toss Rain Scandal also. And um I do content there too of uh controversies, documentaries, scandals, you name it. But this one is gonna be about Edge, uh why he left. I'm gonna pull up an article here and I could we're both gonna react to it. So I'm going to show here on this end. He explained why he left. See what he got to say. Sometimes relationships just grow apart. And I feel WWE and I just outgrown each other. The former WWE champion noted, I wanted to do more. They didn't have much more for me to do. Simple as that. And that's okay. I'll still be watching and still be supporting all of my friends there. Then we have his accomplishments. May you know, is a four-time WWE champion, seven-time World Heavyweight champion, five-time Americano champion, 12-time tag team champion, and WWE tag team champion two makes it 14. Winner of King of the Ring, first Money in the Bank ladder match winner, and won the Royal Rumble twice with his recent win in 2021. But um, he said here that uh, that I have a question about. Let's see. If you guys can see. He said if you're a fan of wrestling, not acronyms, this should make you happy. This is what I have a problem with. Can you see a good break? You guys can see that, right? Everybody can see that? Okay. Yeah, we can see that. I don't buy into this odd mentality of one company or the other. It's weird. If you took offense to that, take a walk. Get some fresh air and soak up some sunshine. It's wrestling, an amazing gig, but still it's wrestling. Relax. It's supposed to be fun. Now, I forgot to do my intro before we get into it. I forgot. But yeah, that is what he said. And I'm going to react to it myself first. So, he said that we should take a walk of our of, of this odd. As used with WWE for 25 years, you had your first ret retirement there. But fortunately for you, you were able to make a comeback in 2020 at the Royal Rumble. You know, you got a big pop there, big buzz. Everyone was, was excited to see you back. We all thought your career was over, but you end up coming back, making a miraculous return. You had a great feud with your former Raider RKO member, Randy Orton. You guys tore the house down WrestleMania 36 with the last man standing match during the COVID era. The first WrestleMania that debuted two nights. And of course, during the COVID where it was no fans. Then you had a, a 
another match with a backlash following that for the greatest wrestling match ever. Also spectacular match. You know, you have a few with Roman Reigns over the Universal title, a few with um, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles. And you was leader of the Judgment Day before you were booted out the group. Um, you had your last match recently on SmackDown in your hometown Toronto, and you won. And everyone knows WWE has a tradition. They let guys lose their last match. And you won yours in front of your family, from your crowd, from your wife, your, your children, everything. And um, and you pretty much, you know, you got paid a reportedly three-year, $9 million contract. And I, I would say you got your you you got you got your money's worth. They got their money's worth out of you. You got the money that you that you felt you deserved. You know, you had some great matches, great rivalries, but where's this? I need I I want more and this whole take a walk for fans. I mean, it's kind of this loyal edge. I mean, it's not like you sat on the sidelines and didn't do nothing the whole three years. You did quite a bit. Now, granted, and I'm gonna get to this later, you did once you was booed at Judgment Day, you did take time off. We didn't see you as often as we did when you first came back in 2020. But to say that um take a walk for fans, it's kind of a slap in the face to the fans. And with that being said, Edge, I gotta put you on the list for that, man. You just made the list. Oh, no. Oh. You know, you had a great streak going for being WWE that long. Great, great streak. I, I don't, I don't get it. You had the streak. This is how we felt with the when you came back. But now this is where we ask that you join AEW. So yeah, Edge, I, I feel some kind of way about that, man. That's not good at all. I mean, to say that it's not like you're being ungrateful, man. You're not appreciating what WWE did for you, especially considering the fact that you are an older man that's about to turn 50 this month. And you came back, you was with 47. They don't normally do that for guys. They normally just give you a couple matches. They let you make a Royal Rumble appearance, maybe have a couple backstage segments, maybe have one good match. That's it. You got more than enough. I'm going to pass the mic to Goodbread on this one. This is just nonsense, man. I, I totally agree with you, and I think that it's ungrateful, and it's just not ethical. Like Edge was one of the very few people that could say he never stepped foot in another company now he just ruins his legacy for what pride and ego what more do you have to accomplish edge i mean christian is over there i get that but all you finna do now is take some of christian's spotlight you know what i mean you don't need christian to elevate you you know i mean you're finna take all the christian spotlight and what's with aw being the land of the, the 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 fallen and the old decrepit WWE superstars. This is are you this is this is borderline. Oh, go ahead. This is borderline WCW 2.0 because this is exactly what WCW did in their heyday. They took upon all the 80s, all the WWE 80s superstars, and they allowed them to ruin their company. That was a great graph right there. Yeah. yeah, this is a, a image here. All the guys on the top row, those are guys who started their career in WWE. And the first one's Chris Jericho, second Matt Hardy, third is Christian, as you mentioned, fourth is Jeff Hardy, and the fifth is the most recently, as you call Fallen, Edge. And now of all five of these guys are in AEW, which is pretty much the Attitude Era slash 2.0 or WCW 2.0. This is crazy. All five of these guys had great careers in WWE. It's not like none of these guys were, you know, uh, enhancement talent. These guys actually did something. Chris Jericho, multiple-time world champion. Edge, 
Christian, multiple time world champion, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, you know, tore down with the tag team division. Now you're over here. Look what you guys become. The only one that made some of himself is, so far is Chris Jericho and now Christian. They don't always have a rejuvenate career, but Edge, you don't need that. Come on now. Absolutely. No, I mean, this is this is knowledge we giving y'all right now. Knowledge has been dropped. So yeah. Um I don't get that. What you mean you ungrateful? But I'm gonna pull up some more stuff. He said, um, what did he say? He said, if you're not, what did he mean, wrestling, not acronyms? Can you, you know what that means, Gilbred? When he said that? Let me pull that up right here. Um, what does he mean by this whole, if you're, if you're a fan of wrestling, not acronyms, this should make you happy? What does he mean by that? I have no clue what he meant by that. I'm yeah, what does he mean? Acronyms, I mean, what are you talking about, Edge? Or Adam, I should call you. Um, yeah, it's just a great yeah, way to justify. For, it's just a great way to justify um disloyal behavior. Like it's real disloyal. Yeah, it really is, man. But then again, you're gonna <laughs> get people that say that it is nothing disloyal about it. His contract expired. He didn't resign, and he chose to go to a lower tier company. Everybody is trying to get to the WWE. So for you to go to, to AEW, which is the second second brand, and try to make excuses of this is best for me is just delusional. Again, now it's been dropped there. Knowledge has been dropped. Yeah. Um I don't get it, man. I mean, to say that you wanted more, what more did you want? What more do you want? You was here 25 years. You say you, you you met the woman, your wife that you started your family with. What more? I mean, got you everything you have. What more can you say? I mean, I think he mean. I don't know if he means. I mean, I'm gonna pull up something else with him. We ain't done with you, Edge. Now, I think this is why he may have left right here. I think the whole Judgment Day him. Not being a group anymore and getting kicked out, which led to him leaving. It says right here, the group turned. Um, the article says he explains why he didn't work as the leader of the Judgment Day. Credit to Wrestling Inc. He said it might, it just wasn't going to work. It might have eventually with more time, but it would have taken a lot more work. Wow. So it. It might have eventually, but he wasn't. It's going to take too much work. So it turned on him on the episode of June 6th of Monday Night Raw. is when Finn Balor was introduced as a member of Judgment Day. But they say that at the time it was alleged that the radio superstar wanted to exit the storyline because the company wanted to take the stable in a supernatural direction. Room idea was never materialized. Then Dominic Mysterio. Then, of course, he feuded with them. Hmm. So basically, Edge, it could have worked possibly, but you're saying it would have took too much work for you. You had nothing but time. You was on a three year contract. You, I mean, after the judgment day, what else more did you have to do? Honestly, what could you have done? Sounds I mean, like he be- didn't want to. Sound like he didn't want to put nobody over. It sounded like he wanted the spotlight for himself. He wanted the main event. And at, at your age, it's about putting a new talent over. I can't even hold you. That is that is game right there. You good, man. Because I am that damn good. I can't believe he said that. Tell me you did not just say that. I mean, it's like you didn't want to put in the work, Edge. Like you said, good bro. You said it perfectly. You didn't want to put another wrestler over. You only want to make yourself look good. You basically, Edge, you went to business for yourself, not for the future of the company. That's probably why WWE sent you sent you away. That's crazy. Now, my thing is, 
is this going to work? Because he is on a full time basis right here. It says it right here. I mean, look at this. Um, Y'all can see that. Let me pull that up for you. Uh, pull that up right now. Look at that. A three-year. He only worked five matches a year in addition to 25 TV appearances. That's not a lot, good bro. How is that too much work? Does that sound like he's doing a lot on his contract? It's like he ain't doing nothing, Harley. It's 365 days in a year. He's only on this contract. He's only doing five matches a year and 25 appearances all together. That sound like too much work for you? That's right. That's, that's nothing. That's a that's a sweet deal. Sweet deal. I don't get that, bro. Yeah, you you really you think you the face that run the place, huh? The face that runs the place. That's some nonsense right there. And I'm gonna see how much you your contract was. Let's look again. Three million per year. As long as he complete three times a year, commits a five matches a year, as explained before. The first bit the world around with 25. So this man's getting paid three million dollars a year, five TV appearances, 25 altogether. And he said that was too much work for him to work with the uh, judgment day. I, I can't oh, believe it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I see what you mean. You want me this. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just this is crazy. Edge, you sound like an entitled man. Think that you deserve it. And you're rubbing people the wrong way. Not just the fans. I'm pretty sure your peers and others in, in backstage regarding this. This is nonsense, bro. Now we're going to go to... What his daughter said. See what this says here. Credit to Sportskedia. Ed's daughter urged him to join AW, have more fun with former WWE Intercontinental Champion. Let's see what he means. One of the pivotal things besides my daughter telling me I should go be with Uncle Jay, Christian Cage, and have fun that I thought I could really try and help there and in turn help the entire wrestling industry, which is the thing that I just love. But hold on, hold on. Who told you that Christian, did Christian tell you he needs your help? Because Christian looked like he's doing it perfectly fine to me. And this is what I mean by the microwave, everything is replaceable error. You know what I mean? Now you, you're teaching your daughter how to be disloyal and how not to stick it out. You're, you're being taken care of. You're being taken care of. You have no reason to leave, but I mean, I digress, man. Yeah, we we feel. I feel like Michael. I'm starting to feel like Michael Cole on this one for real. Damn it! Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, like you said, Christian. Christian was not needing your help. Matter of fact, Christian has been in W. I'm sorry, AEW for what since since 21, 2021. Almost about two and a half, three years. Why would he need your help now, Edge? Did you do you think he are you really gonna have fun with Christian? That you right. and him should have fun, or he's gonna be at Christian expense. So it's gonna be fun at Christian expense. Right, right. Christian fun. is the TNT champion. He's doing his thing. He's putting people over. Yeah, other he's than made Sting, other than Sting, he's like the the he's the best. Old time, uh, old school person doing his yeah, thing. Yeah, veteran. Yeah, the best veteran. Yeah, right. Um, I don't get it, Edge. You said that the Judgment Day. You said that was too much work. It would eventually work, but it was too much. Then you say you want to do more. 
now you're saying your now you also say your daughter encouraged you to go be with your best friend, real life best friend Christian uh Cage, who's the TNT champion, and have fun. Are these very valid reasons to leave a 25 year working relationship with the WWE where you have uh, gained your name and your um prominent where you let came to prominence? Is it really worth all of that to come to AW to rust for a few years? Is was it really worth all that? And I would say no. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Edge, you keep, you're on a full-time deal. You're going to mess around and you're going to regret doing it. You're going to have, uh, I guess, buyer's remorse. And let's go into here, talk about his contract. He's supposed to be full-time. Let's pull that up. Because I don't get it. Now, look here. We just mentioned that he was on a three-year, $9 million contract. He barely made any appearances. We could, we saw that he was full part-time. Now you're leaving to become, what's that right there, to be full-time AEW at 50? Let's see, they appear and they officially announced, and Tony Khan announces during the uh, media scrum, he's going to be a full-time star for AEW, meaning he's going to be with us every week. Isn't it like you're going backwards? How you go from a sweet deal, as Goodbread stated, three-year, $9 million, Five TV, five matches a year, twenty-five TV appearances, three million, and you left left all of that in the history and the work relationship to work full time with AEW, and you're older now. That's backwards. All I gotta say is you keep you you wrestle since you're wrestling full time now part time, which I don't agree with, and you're gonna have matches every week. You're going to mess around with an injury, and then that's when this is it's going to hit the fan. This shit's about to hit the fan. I agree yeah. with you, bro. And if you look at it, AEW is the land of all of the broke neck, cleared wrestlers that you, that got cleared by WWE for their neck injury, which we all thought was going to be um, career ending, but they all came back from it. And now you got Paige sitting over there. You got Daniel Bryant sitting over there. You got Edge sitting over there. Fuck it. All we need now is Stone Cold to come out of retirement and go sit over there. <laughs> literally, literally, you got everybody else over there. You got, I mean, Stone Cold. I mean, if you, I mean, it's just ridiculous. You want to add? I mean, it, it's it's dumb. Once as your time is up, like Gilbert said, this is the point of your career. You should be putting over wrestlers and making them look like stars, just like people did for you. Undertaker made him look like a star at WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? Mick Foley makes you like a star at WrestleMania. Now it's your turn to do it. And you're not willing to do that. You want to be as your, I guess that's why you have the nickname, the Rated R Superstar. You make sure you kept that name. Now you want to live up to that. You want to be the superstar. I get it now. I get it. I guess it's true. Uh, your theme song, I don't know you. You think you know me? I don't know you. I thought I did, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. It's just crazy, man. It's, it don't make no sense. Well, what do you think about that, good Brett? Man, that's spot on, bro. That's spot on right there. You know what I mean, I mean, it, it, it. This is just it's it, competition. Competition breeds this shit right here. So, you know what I mean, he's exercising his options. Although we don't like it, he's exercising his options. It sucks well, what's going on? He's downsizing. To me, in my opinion, yeah. he's downsizing. He's downgrading. Step down. Yeah. How do you go from having a part-time? You're getting probably the same amount of If I had to guess, you're getting the same amount of money you had in WWE, but you're working more, and you're there every week. And away from your family, I might add. Because I could, if I'm not mistaken, Edge, I thought you wanted to spend time with your daughters and your wife. You, it's like you're not doing that. You're going to be full-time. I mean, as in Beth Phoenix's position as his wife, she's gonna see like how this work and something got worse. It's not a good call. That's I don't true. get that. Yeah, you 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 know, and it, we I just pulled it up. You're there every week, and his first match is supposed to be uh, this week against Luchasaurus, I believe, on Dynamite or Collision. He's gonna fight Big Luchasaurus, and you fifty. Do you wrestling that big dude with a with a with a very sketchy neck? I want to see how that's gonna work out. 
I really do. I mean, you, it's going to get to that point. If it was smart for Edge, if not be, if you had to be full time, at least do mostly tags. You're doing this all alone. You're doing singles matches. Edge this, must this, think. Yeah, go this ahead. is going to trigger. This is definitely going to trigger a domino effect because now you got to look at all of the guys in AEW that were promised a position. Now, Lucha Service. When he first started, when AEW first started, Lucha Service and Jungle Jungle Boy Jack Perry were predicted to really be like up there with the elite, with the with with the um Young Bucks as like rivals for the tag, the all the eight all elite WWE um, tag team championship. Now, the more they add these old alumni from WWE, the more they push the, the they push their natural talent. That they're supposed to be harvesting, the more they push them down on the ladder, and and that's gonna that's gonna be a problem soon. Cause now look, if Edge is, is booked to own um, fight Lucha Service, Lucha Service is now taking another L. He just took an L yep. to Christian. Yeah. I, so when the Lucha Service, who he we had high expectations for Lucha Service. When do he get a chance to really like thrive and become a new a, ta- a new talent? I don't get it. Lucas Sword, yeah, you're right. Lucas Sword did take an L. He won a championship they never even held. Christian held mm-hmm. the title. Right. And this is it right here, guys. It's what I'm referring to. Um His debut upon for October 10th has also been revealed, and it's against Lucasaurus at Dynamite Title Tuesday, October 10th. This is ridiculous. This don't make no sense, man. I, I'm at, I'm at the, I don't have nothing else to say. This is just disgusting, bro. He gonna make those guys quit now. They gonna probably go to WWE or Impact or Independent Scene. I can't see them young guys going for that too much for a long time. He gonna make them quit, guys who's probably future for the company like you mentioned, good bread. They're gonna quit. Facts. Yep. You remember how the radicals? Remember how the radicals and Jer- Jericho and Dean Malenko how they all got out of there because they were they weren't old, they weren't dead rookies, but they were they were the future. They were the future of WCW, and they all from why they all got out of there. Like we didn't, yeah, we didn't yeah, Guerrero them. and. Yep, Harry Saturn, all them guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's what this is leading to. WCW 2.0, guys. Congratulations, y'all played yourself on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, congratulations, congratulations, big time. I have nothing else to say regarding this. You have anything you want to add, good bread? Because I'm going to uh close this. This is just I'm I, I'm speechless at this point. Oh, man, listen, this is going to be a chess piece. This is going to be so much entertaining. So much entertainment for us wrestling fans because you know the next move. WC WWE is on the clock now. You know their next move. Yeah. Where CM will Punk. CM Punk land? Where will CM Punk land? So let's get it. And you already got you already got Jay Cargill coming at uh Raw. They said she may show up at Fast Lane this week. So that's a plus. CM Punk's either my prediction going to show up at Survivor Series or show up at Royal Rumble. Because him and Randy Orton, Randy Orton's supposed to return too. So, but see, Mark, one of those two guys are going to show up at Survivor Series. If not, Punk, Orton, and vice versa. Whoever shows up at Survivor Series, the other going to show up at Royal Rumble or somewhere in between that time frame. But um, um I'm going to uh, close this out, good bread. Thank you for coming out, bro. Appreciate it for all your no hard doubt, work bro. and all your dedication. All right. All right, um, two soon two videos. The champ's gonna head out, but soon two videos will pop up when Randy Orton goes from boy to man. Next one is the evolution is Randy Orton, and the champ is gonna definitely head out. Thank you guys for coming out tonight and listening to this on the playback. Until then, it is O-U-T.